Hello. In this video, we're going to see another example of an application for an analog multiplier, and that is that of a frequency doubler. A frequency doubler is a circuit that will produce an output signal of a frequency equal to twice the frequency of the input signal. So I've connected my analog multiplier, in this case the AD633, since we're familiar already with its transfer function. Remember, for an AD633, my output voltage V out is equal to uh, one tenth of the two input voltages. In this case, since my V in is connected to the two inputs of the two input voltages, I expect my V out will be V in squared divided by 10. And so I'm applying an input signal equal to 5 times the sine of 2 pi 10,000 t. So essentially an input signal which is a sinusoid of amplitude 5 and frequency 10 kilohertz. And I'm going to be using the following trigonometric identity, sine of A times sine of B equal to one half of cosine of A minus B minus cosine of A plus B. First off, I'm going to write out the expanded version of my output voltage, V out, again, is equal to V in squared, so 5 squared divided by 10 times sine, and that's going to be a squared of 2 pi times 10,000 T, all of that squared. And I can rewrite that as 5 squared is 25, divided by 10 is 2.5. And now I'm going to apply my trigonometric identity since I have essentially sine of uh, 2 pi times 10 kT times sine of 2 pi times kT. T. So it's essentially uh, this equation except uh, A and B are equal to each other. And so essentially I will have um, sine of or rather cosine, one half of the cosine of A minus B, which in this case is 10,000 minus 10,000, which is zero, minus one half of the cosine of 10,000 plus 10,000, which is um, 20,000, so two pi times 20,000 times T. And so essentially here is my component with a frequency twice the input frequency. So I can go ahead and um, continue expanding that. The cosine of zero degrees is going to be one. So this is going to be 2.5 times one half or 1.25 minus 2.5 over halves, which is 1.25 times the cosine of two pi times 20,000 T. So again, I have my, um, my output signal, which has a DC offset of 125, and then consists of a sinusoid of amplitude 1.25, volts and frequency equals 20 kilohertz, which is again, two times the input frequency. And so let's uh, go ahead and represent graphically uh, my input and my output signals so that we can get a better idea of what the circuit is doing. And so if I represent my input signal on a set of axes, uh, where I'm representing voltage on the, on the Y axis and time along the X axis, my input signal will be a sinusoid, again, of uh, amplitude 5 volts. So this will be 5 volts and negative 5 volts. No offset and frequency equal to 10 kilohertz. So my Fi is 10 kilohertz. And in the case of my output signal, I can see it's going to have an offset of 1.25 volts, which is one-fourth of the amplitude of my input signal. 
and it's going to be a sinusoid also with amplitude uh, 1.25 volts. Now in this case, because it is a cosine, it's going to be uh, 90 degrees um, shifted with respect to the input signal. And because uh, the cosine has a, a negative value, instead of starting at uh, 2.5, it's going to be starting at zero, reaching a value of positive 2.5 at that point. Etc. So, let's see if I would represent this accurately. So, essentially, an output signal with an amplitude of 1.25. Um, so, peak to peak is 2.5 volts. Peak to peak. This is the offset of 1.25 and with appropriate phase shift with respect to the input. So, and the frequency of the output signal will not be 20 kilohertz as we can observe uh, for any one period of the input signal going from the zero point to uh, that point over there, I get two cycles of the output signal. Thank you.